Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I am transforming my home into a ski lodge for my Christmas decor this year. And I'm planning my biggest Christmas party yet that is also ski lodge themed. And when I say my biggest Christmas party yet, I mean the guest list is bigger than ever before. And I'm just trying to make this party better than all of my previous ones. I've been throwing this Christmas party every year for a few years now. And for reference, I think two years ago, I probably had like 40 to 50 people. Last year, I think I had between 50 and 60. This year, we already have 85 RSVPs and counting. More are still rolling in. I've thrown a lot of parties for all occasions, but I have never had one with 85 people, so. Wish me luck. With help from my personal assistant Zoe and my intern Michaela, we have made a lot of progress with the decor around the house, DIY projects, stuff like that. But now it's really time to start nailing down the details for the party itself. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I want to have a snow pit snow playground. Basically think cool sandbox, but instead of sand, it's gonna be snow. And it's gonna be in my backyard for the kids to play in at my Christmas party. So we already figured out the main hard part, which is how to have snow in Texas when it's not even below freezing outside. Shout out to Party Goat because they are supplying all of the instant snow powder that's gonna give us faux snow that looks and feels like real snow. But there are many more logistics that need to be addressed before this entire snow pit idea can really come to fruition. <laughs> Step one, put the things on the thing. Put the things on the thing and drill the holes where the holes need to go. And then I would, I would like try to get this flush with the bottom of it. I mean, really you want it, you want these. These need to be exactly lined up so no, that it's not point, like, point. but that's, you know, we'll do that. So let's go ahead and lay the other one maybe. Oh no, we can't. No, you want that one attached, I think, and then line this one up with it. Okay. So we're making these poles that are gonna be serving as pillars that are gonna hold the lights to make a lighted border around our snow pit. Holes are a little not lining up exactly Ooh, on the we'll other one. We'll so we'll these light pole thingies need to be extremely sturdy and they need to be weighed down so that they are safe and they stay in place. We don't want anything toppling down on the children as they're playing in the snow. Pole is attached. Let's see. I mean. But imagine a bunch of rocks in there. It just sort of feels like this will rip out of there. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't. I would feel more confident with cement kind of locking. Like, yeah. cause I'm worried about it just ripping out of the wood. This, like mm -hmm. regardless of the rocks, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder like, what about the bottom then? Like, would it be good to like coat it or reinforce it? Maybe, but I wouldn't know how to do that in a way that's like mm -hmm. doable. Yeah. So, so at least a little layer of cement would be better than nothing. Okay. I'm not too worried about how they look aesthetically. I think just the plain wood of the pole and the barrels that we're using, it kind of goes with the rustic ski lodge theme as is. I'm just more concerned about the functionality, making sure that it works as intended is nice and sturdy and is gonna provide the amount of light that we need because this party will be happening after dark. How much water? Four pints? It turns out working for a YouTuber gives you so many like cool points, like, if I tell someone like my age or younger that I work for a YouTuber, they're like, whoa, oh my God, which one? It must be so fun to work for a YouTuber. And then you say which one and they're like, oh. oh. <laughs> it's, if it's not Mr. Beast, they're like, oh. Definitely sturdy, but heavy. 
Where do you want? We should kind of measure it, but <laughs> approximate. I'm, if we're doing this one, it's like somewhere right here-ish. Yeah. We got to put the thingies on the thingies to the thingies, and then we'll have our lights. All these thingies. Wow. So we have thingies to attach the lights to. Yes. To the poles. Yes, that's our plan. So here's what the poles are looking like in place. Okay, I successfully untangled one curtain of lights and they do fun little m light modes, like colorful. We're creating a nice taut line with this stuff first and we've got this whole hookup that makes it tight and secure and then we will attach the lights to this so it's not just the lights trying to hold themselves up. We saw it on a YouTube video, seems legit. Main thing is that these need to be properly weighted down so nothing is like trying to tip over. I think making it tight in the middle and bunched up on the sides. Oh. Maybe. I mean, it could be equaled out a lot better than that, but yeah. it's a little slacky. It is, and I wonder why, you know? Our string's not tight enough. But but if we tighten it anymore, the poles will fall over. Well, they don't have their sandbags in them also. In theory, that would help a little bit with that that's, problem. That's a good point, yeah. Pull it all the way. Oh, like loop it around? Like that. And then make it keep going around the corner. And then, yeah, then we only need, and then it'll meet in the middle. Yeah. So our snow pit area is looking okay so far. It's not quite working out how we thought it would. We wanted to do more with the lights and just like having more connected to the poles, but they're not really sturdy enough to hold much more and we'd rather it be safe than extra cute. So we're just kind of working with what works and hopefully once it all comes together with the actual snow and everything set up at nighttime, hopefully it looks really cool and magical and inviting, but I don't know. When it comes to any party that I throw, a big thing for me as a full-time content creator is capturing the content. That means video footage for YouTube, video footage in vertical form for TikTok and Instagram Reels, and also photos. So I do have my personal assistant Zoe and my intern Michaela, who mostly is behind the camera for my YouTube videos, but then there's not an extra set of hands to also take photos. So that is where my friend Rel is gonna come to the rescue and be the photographer for this Christmas party. I know I can always count on Rel, not only because he's one of my close friends, but he is a talented photographer. He did an amazing job on my birthday photo shoot and I've worked with him for a lot of different projects. He doesn't do photography full time anymore, but he always shows up for me when he can. It really comes in clutch to have creative, talented friends. Hello. Hey. Come on in. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> okay, ski lodge. It's nice. So I invited Rel over to do a test shoot just so that he could kind of scope out the scene. This party is going to be happening at nighttime, so the lighting can be a little bit tricky. And I've had bad experiences in the past of just there being so much going on at a party that the photographer gets frazzled and we're not on the same page and I don't end up getting the content that I want. So I think the more preparation, test shooting, or organizing, scheduling, the better. So this was actually the first little area that I wanted to show you and get your opinions on because this is gonna be like the main photo op station at the party. I definitely want everyone to be able to come over here and sit down and take pictures. Okay. You know, the whole ski lift chair situation. I would like to show as 
much of it as possible. Like get the skis in it, get the trees, not have it be so tight because that kind of defeats the purpose of all this up here. But I know that we are limited on the fact that the wall is right there. You can kind of go into the hallway there to back up a little bit, but I just wasn't sure like what's possible as far as like the framing here. Got it. Okay, so we can definitely get the photos here. Uh, right away, I know that I'm gonna probably go rinse like a wider lens just because we have like a little section back here, um, but it can work. And then I'll have an extra light. So we won't be worried about that, um, a strobe light with the diffuser. So all this will be filled up, it'll look like a studio. So that sounds good. Actually, now that I think about it, let me like check the flash first and then we'll see if that works. Cause I might not need to use a strobe. So I'm curious to see how wide of a shot you can get, the angles you can get, and what the lighting looks like, just to make sure we can get, get the vibes. Yes, let's test that. Since people will probably mostly wanna like share these on Instagram, I feel like mm -hmm. vertical oh, okay. orientation, yeah, yeah. does that help with like, uh, or does see. that make it worse? So I don't think it's bad. I do think that it works. Let me show you. Okay, so this is vertical. Oh yeah, that's perfect. As far as the framing, I feel like that's fitting in the things that need to fit into the scene. Okay. Horizontal, if you like, you know, you can mix that in too, I guess. But I feel like just, like I said, for Instagram, it's more like that, like vertical. I feel like that is a good cutoff. Does it get the ski? Yeah, okay. it reaches the skis. I think that's about as wide as you would need to go. Okay. Lighting wise. It looks cool. Yeah, it looks so, something about it just looks like severe instead of yeah. cozy. Okay. Like, how can we make it look full of love? Yeah, I think there's two things. I think one, the white balance is because it doesn't look warm, but then also you know what? The flash. Hear me out. What if you try it with no flash, no lights, no nothing, just the actual lighting of the room? Okay, natural, but like this lighting or a little bit. This is all the lighting right this now. This is right? all the lights we got. That could still work. I would just have to be very vocal. Like, hey, one, two, three. I need y'all to hold it like 30 seconds. Cheering, don't move, you know. Yeah. But that does look more ski lodgy and warm. See, those are the happy, the warm and cozy tones that I need. But is it grainy and Zoom. Did you blurry? Say? This is a horrible picture. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it is, it is not. Of course, it's never gonna be as crisp mm -hmm. as with the flash, but mm -hmm. it's like a give and take. Like, right. do you want it to look cozy or do you want it to look crisp? Yeah, I think those might actually work. Those are way smaller than the ones I have. And they do like temperature settings, so you could like put it warmer, maybe that will help. That's perfect. To not make it so. Yeah, I think that's what. Adjust this real quick. Yeah, I think this one could work. You may just need to move one panel um, for the shadow that's behind you. Oh yeah, I think this is the ticket right here because this looks more crisp, but not too just like cold and artificial. Yeah, I feel like that's gonna be our best bet, just using those. So another one of my concerns is, you know, people are gonna be coming in at different times. So is that going to be like, hey, find rail so we can come over and do this because if they have limited battery, I wanna make sure that we're able to turn it off and give it a break. Realistically, it's gonna be sort of like how it was at my birthday party where people were just kind of going and taking photos whenever. Right. And it was kind of, at some points it was like a line of people who all wanted to do it. At some points it was empty, like, mm -hmm. so it is gonna kind of be throughout. Okay. I think there will be times where you can turn the lights off and take a break. And you can, you can also, you're kind of in control in a sense. You can kind of like encourage people, you can encourage and discourage if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, did you get pictures? Let's let's do it, I wanna do it now. But then also you're gonna wanna like stop and take a break and eat and drink and you're not gonna be over here taking pictures, so. Got you, okay. You know. Okay, so we're good on that, feeling good about that. The next main thing is just that I'm gonna want photos throughout these general areas of like the setup, the decor, how everything turned out and looked, those Pinterest type photos, like look, I had this at my party, but also a few people enjoying the party photos. Okay. Not too much of that. Okay. Just a little, just for a little bit for memories, but I don't need a picture of everybody doing everything at the party, if that makes sense. I more so want like the setup yeah. photos. So I don't know if like flash or what's needed for, cause this is pretty much the lighting. I mean, there's gonna be maybe a few more lights on, like I'll have all these on 
and this one. But this is the lighting. Two part question. What time are you having people come over? And then also what time do you think stuff will be set up? Is it probably gonna be like closer to the same time? It kind of depends on our vendors setting everything up. The stuff that we're in control of setting up, I would like to have done like an hour ahead of time, be done with it well in advance. We do have like the bartender coming. We have an ice sculpture coming. I have to double check when they're gonna arrive and when they're gonna be done setting up. So ideally we wanna have time, you know, with having all of that set up so that you can come in before people get here and get those shots. It may not be a whole lot of time though. Okay, that's fine. You know what, I think beforehand, if we just get maybe some type of list for me to follow, that'll be like the best. Yeah. I think that worked well with the birthday shoot, just kind of having some type of structure. Yeah, shout out to Zoe. <laughs> yes, de we're definitely gonna have a shot list. I'll just say basic things. We're gonna have a, a key set up here, which is the gift shop. Okay. So that's gonna be a key thing as far as like product shots of what products are there, the whole thing, wide shot, people getting something from there. Like that's a really big focal point that we wanna get all types of shots of. Okay. And then the bartender is gonna be over here under the light. We're moving this table out the way. Bar is gonna be here, bartender. So it's, and then it's gonna be all decorated. So it's gonna be another big focal point that we definitely wanna highlight. And then of course, as you've seen at all my parties, the food is always like going across here. That's another big focal point. And then the patio. So that's the, this is the next tricky part. Let me, let me take you outside. So we are gonna have a whole setup on the patio. There's gonna be food and things here as well and encouraging people to sit and gather and you know enjoy here on this couch this is the lighting um i don't think we're gonna be adding any additional lighting here i feel like it's pretty well lit as far as it's not too far off from yeah. how it was inside yeah. to get pictures but the other area an interesting thing oh <laughs> <laughs> what is this <laughs> This is gonna be the snow pit. Okay, this is nice. So as you can see, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've started testing our setup. Um, the concern was not only for photos, but just for safety reasons, it's gonna be dark. The party is gonna be around this time, you know? So right. it's gonna be fully dark outside. And as far as built-in lighting, I only have that one spotlight off my house kind of reaching over here. Okay. We got the light kind of glowing from the pool, but I knew I was gonna need more lighting, so that's why I have these. I know it's not really adding much. We're still kind of workshopping this aspect of it and seeing what else we can add to bring more light. Yeah. I don't think it's terrible. Like, it's lit. It's not dark over here, but it's for kids to play in. Right. So I want it to be, you know, well lit. So I do think we could stand to add, like, a little bit more light, and we're still figuring out how to do that, but it is gonna be kind of, you know, dim like this. So that's another thing that I wanted you to be able to test out and see because this is another main main area that we really want good photos of right so just like we have the led ones inside i have a led that sits on top of the camera and it's freakishly strong okay. like I've, I've shot at nighttime before with that so i know for sure that's taken care of i'm a kid playing in the snow <laughs> action shots woo so fun i'm a little nervous about this i ain't gonna lie Oh, well, the ones I took are definitely blown out. Hold on. How yeah. does it even read on camera with these like lights? Like, does it even look cool? Well, I'm not, glad they still really. show because sometimes they don't. I don't know. Because if you take pictures in the daytime, then you don't see the lights, but you right. see the stuff. Yeah. But at night, you can kind of see the lights better, but the, I don't know. It's mm -hmm. kind of like either or. I think we'll get it because it's not, like, these can be warmed up. It's not like too harsh shadows in the background. And again, that light that I have, and it's like cool, warm, that ability as well. And this is the part that's always hard because I have so many different types of photos and things that I wanna make sure I get done, but it's like that little window of time between the stuff is set up and then people are arriving and right. now I need to be on host duty. Mm. And that's where I get frustrated because I'm like, oh, I didn't get a photo like this and I didn't get this photo and I need a thumbnail picture and blah, blah, blah. We definitely need to be like military strategic about like using our time wisely, wisely to get all these photos because I'm a little, I don't know. I'm thinking through like how much time we're gonna even have and it's gonna be very tricky. I think we got this. Let's not stress too much, it's gonna work out. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty at night. They were looking a little stupid in the daytime. I'm not gonna lie.
Something that I always like to do for every party that I throw is give out party favors. Just as like a little token of my appreciation for people showing up to my parties, I have a lot of friends and family who live out of town, out of state, have to literally catch flights and book hotel rooms just to be able to come to my parties. So I feel like the least I can do is give them a little party favor that they can take home. But I've had my fair share of going to parties and events and the party favors, no offense, kind of suck because it's something that like you don't want, you're never gonna use. Like it's just random knickknacks. So I try to be thoughtful about the types of things that I'm giving out for my party favors. That is why I am so excited to be partnering with Zazzle again for this party. I worked with Zazzle for my 30th birthday party and was able to get a lot of custom items for the party as well as party favors. And they turned out perfect, everyone loved them. It just fit right into the theme. So I knew I wanted to run it back for this Christmas party. I wanted to show you the Zazzle stuff. Remember Zazzle from my birthday party we got? stuff from them again. Most of this is gonna be for our gift shop setup. Remember I was telling you we're gonna build a shelf. It's gonna be with that whole table over there. Kind of like how we did at Zaya's party. Um, so we got stuff to have the gifts at the gift shop, but I know we have you tasked with food duty. So part of that is like the plates, cups, napkins, silverware type stuff. So we did get branded napkins. Oh. So we have, I think it's like 100 napkins. We might wanna get extra plain ones just to have more, but yeah. definitely wanna lay these out. Okay. And branded hot oh, wow. liquid cups with the lids for the hot chocolate bar. That's cool. So just so you know, we have those. That logo is everything. Who did that? Me. Okay, hot cocoa, napkins. What else you got? So then this is the stuff for the guests to take home. We got tote bags. Nice. With this logo on there that I also made. They had these tote bags in different colors. I went with the green to go with the decor, you know? I just hear people asking, oh, where's that ski resort? I've never heard of it. At my house. It's in, in my Texas. backyard. It's in Central Texas. Like it looks real, right? Yeah. Like It looks like a real ski resort. Yeah. I feel like this is like literally the tote bag that you would get. It is. At a, like the type of tote bag. That's nice. So we got a bunch of those. I got these stainless steel water bottles with that same logo on there. I feel like it looks kind of sporty, yeah, like they're... ski. People who go skiing who are kind of sporty like that would maybe carry something like that. So we got a bunch of those. So what's in here? These are the special frosted glass mugs. At first I was gonna go for like typical coffee mug. But then I saw these and I was like, this feels a little bit more winter snow lodge, Ooh, you know? That's really cool. We are ready. So yeah, we have to build our display, mm -hmm. our branded display. Hopefully that goes well. And then we'll have it like, it's gonna have shelves where it's like all these lined up, water bottles lined up, bags maybe hanging or something. And then we've also got some other gifts that we're gonna pair okay. with it. The cool thing about Zazzle is that there are so many products to choose from. Some that are kind of like pre-made, some that are completely blank and customizable. There's a huge variety and endless options as far as customizing them. So you are guaranteed to find some Thing that works for your event, your party, your theme. And it's really easy and fun to customize the items as well. I love having a logo for everything that I do. I love having that little like branded effect and Zazzle makes it super easy to get that effect. Truly Zazzle has become my one-stop shop for all things holiday, party, event planning. Plus they offer really fast shipping time. So if you're ever doing anything in a little bit of a rush, cause I know how things can get when it comes to party planning, you can still get your stuff in time from Zazzle. So y'all still have time before the holidays, or if you have any other parties or special occasions coming up soon, definitely check out Zazzle. So for this gift shop display, I was thinking to just sort of copy how we had it for Zaya's Barbie party. And we had, you know, that one rented from the, the people. And it was basically a wooden arch with two little shallow shelves on it with, you, you know, using the table underneath it. So I, this was my original design, just literally copying that same thing, but we would make that ourselves. And I was sort of trying to map out like how we could fit all the products with just that. But I don't know now with what we actually are getting, like all the different products 
Do we need more space than that? Should we design the arch differently? Should we try to make it like bigger, more shelves? It kind of depends on the product. I feel like whatever we get shouldn't, shouldn't take up a lot of space. And I guess I would just plan for the stuff we know we are going to get because it's been purchased, a little room for decoration, but I don't think we should overdo it. Like let's, let's keep it simple. So I remember the one we got for the Barbie party was like about to here and then it had feet on it. So I remember like it popped up off the wall mm -hmm. and we had to kind of scoot the table out to accommodate that. I believe we gave them dimensions and they custom made it for us, didn't they? I think they might have, yeah. Because I remember having to measure everything. I wonder if we still have those saved do you, somewhere. Do you want it to be the exact same or do you just want a reference? If that's the general idea we're going for, making it the exact same would be the smartest thing to do, unless we're trying to do something very different from that. You know what I mean? As far as I'm concerned, it can be the exact same and it will work perfectly well. So I can go through my email real quick and see if I can find it. Yeah, because I remember we, we did that. Like we had a whole kind of like, I did a drawing with measurements and it was like, cause yeah, I had to measure like how far up the first shelf was. And then one thing I will say is those shelves were very shallow. It was like just enough to hold that little Barbie box. I don't know if that's gonna work for, we might wanna make our shelves deeper. So I've done this whole gift shop party favor setup a few times at a few different parties. I did it for my Ravens Resort beach themed party where I had like custom t-shirts, tote bags, things like that. And I did like a little setup for it. It was pretty minimal. And then for Zaya's Barbie birthday party, I did a gift shop setup where the kids were able to get their own Barbie doll and Barbie accessories. And I actually rented a wooden shelf backdrop thing from a party prop company. But this time for the Christmas party, I felt like now that we're starting to use power tools and kind of level up in our DIY bag, I felt like we can make our own version of that same sort of wooden backdrop shelf thingy to set up a really cute display for the gift shop at the Christmas party. So the idea is that this shelf that we're making is gonna hold all of our Zazzle products. You know, the mugs and the water bottles can be lined up nicely on the shelf. So our total piece will be 46 by 72 to 84 inches. So the first thing I want to do is draw the arch. I'm thinking um, first let's mark the midpoint and then we can take um, half of the width and go straight down the midpoint half of the width. Start from there and that'll be like the midpoint for a circle and we should get like a perfect round top. I think. Yeah, I remember this was a little tricky when we did the arch for the playroom cabinets. We kind of just had to like try it a bunch of times mm -hmm. to get the right shape we wanted. So we can just kind of, you know, do that same thing. But yes, I think we should mark, like you said. Yeah. I remember with the arches, um, we weren't trying to make the arch go all the way to the top, but here we are. So I think we can do like that perfect, like, like square circle, you know? And that's just gonna make it really deep. If you think of a whole circle that fits in here, it's gonna bring it down like way down here. And is that what, not what you prefer? Not necessarily, cause I kinda wanna, the more like space we save, the more space we have for like the shelves, All right, you yeah. know? So I don't wanna cut like too much off just to give it like a nice rounded look, but it doesn't need to be like fully. So more of like rounding these corners and not. Yeah. Okay. And the good thing about building this shelf ourselves is that I will be able to keep it and reuse it for all types of future parties and events. But I was gonna say, I don't have a lot of faith in that little jigsaw I, been, to cut through this. I've been cutting plywood. I think the issue will be when we start trying to curve it and that's why we're gonna have to do a lot of like, I think like straight lines. Like I think first I'm just gonna like cut here. Why is curving it a problem? Because it's, it's so thick, the blade, it gets stuck. And it, it, this might be like a wide enough curve that we don't have that problem. But I, as I've been like using it, that's the biggest issue I've run into. But I, I don't think that will stop us from cutting this out. The 
sawdust is sticking to my hand lotion, so that's a really great feeling to have in between my fingers. Activated. <laughs> right in the eye immediately. Oh man. <laughs> Safety second. Don't get sawdust in your eyes, kids. The Bondo is drying up pretty quickly, so I don't think I have much time to use this batch. Yeah, I like can't even scrape that. Got our two pieces for our shelf. I think our cut edge should be the front face and the existing edge should be the edge that goes against the wall because it'll probably be more flush. I'm gonna hold. You let go. I need this in place. No, you want you want this straight edge because we. This tells me where I need to go. We need it to be. We need it to be through here and a good amount through our wall though. Otherwise it's not gonna hold. Raven's top tips. How do you mark where you need to mark to hang something? How do you do that, Raven? You get some tape. Uh -huh. Put the tape on the thing that you need to mark. You mark the edges of the thing and you mark where, feel for it, and mark the actual hole that you need. You put it here and then it slides down. So you wanna put it up a little bit higher? I would mark where the where you need yeah. it to land. If we put the screw here, then we slide it on and it click clicks down. So it'll end up lower than yes. this. Yes. Yeah. No, no, it'll it'll end up here. Like this is its final place. It's like if it's here, put it in, you hook it, and these screws don't fit. Oh, that's something to consider <laughs> as well. But you would hook it and it would go down. Just kidding, we don't have the right kind of screws to even use this piece, so we're just gonna take it off and not use it. <laughs> Shelf, if I ever seen one. <laughs> how, see how nice it is to make things? It is nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is like... Wait, 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 let me investigate what. There's paint in there and it's like dried. Oh, it's it's like a multi-component. Mm -hmm. We need to rip this off of the other thing. Time to prime. Well, is it time to prime? It's prime time. Recreating the effect of the thing at Home Depot. <laughs> Sorry. Let's not have knife blade shards.
Y'all know I'm always throwing something and I tend to kind of do similar setups but just revamped for different themes. So I can easily repaint this shelf a different color to match whatever new theme I'm doing next time. It looks like coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and with this Cricut logo that I made, I used removable adhesive vinyl, which means it sticks on pretty well, but it peels off pretty easily. So I can always peel it off and make a new one for a new theme. As I've been saying, I'm really like proud of us and excited for the fact that we're using a lot more power tools and able to make all these different like bigger DIYs. Cause I'm like really starting to build up my like prop collection. It's good that I got a storage unit because before you know it, I'm going to have like a whole storage unit full of all types of like full size party and holiday props. I mean, I already have that, but now that I'm starting to do like woodworking, building backdrops and shelves and things, I mean, y'all can just imagine what that storage unit is about to look like. But it's great because now I don't have to like rent things from other companies or any of that stuff. I just feel like we can make everything ourselves. And I'm a Virgo, so honestly, if I can do something myself and just have my control and my complete vision with it, then I prefer that. So for some customized branded gift bags to go with the gift shop, we have these plain little cute little brown paper bags because they feel like rustic to go with the ski lodge theme. I'm gonna do something which I haven't really fully tried before, but I'm gonna make my own stencil with the Cricut Maker. That way I can just use the stencil and paint the logo on. So I got this stencil material. It's like thin plastic that the Cricut can cut out. And then I'm going to adjust my logo to be stencilable because that's the thing you have to remember with stencils. When there's like shapes inside of shapes, that doesn't work for a stencil. So I'm gonna switch this to an actual stencil font. So instead of just like this, it's like this type of font. It's hard to explain, but it's like, it has to all be like little individual pieces like that. So I'm going to go back to my main logo, switch, this to that and we're just not gonna do this part or this part the mountain should be fine because it is actually just all one piece so the stencil will be able to do that i'm gonna make this bigger to line up with the mountain so it can't be like the exact logo that i've been using on everything else but i use this font elsewhere on some other stuff that i made so i feel like it'll kind of all go together and still look good and you know it gets the point across that it's like a different version of the logo like that. So then I'm gonna save this off of Canva as a PNG file and then take it to the Cricut to cut it out. So Bougie has helped me <laughs> prepare the design and I just made sure to switch my material to flexible stencil film so that they can calibrate the blade to actually cut through this plastic all the way or whatever. And then I just measured my bag to make sure I was making it like the right size. So let's see. You didn't cut enough. Hmm. I, I needed more blade pressure. Let's try it again. I still have space on the sheet. Let's put it on more pressure. Sometimes when you're working with the new material, you have to figure out how to calibrate the machine. Okay, third time's the charm, actually. Let's see if this cut properly. Oh no. That was perfect, except I ripped it right there. Just a tiny bit, that was my fault. But that worked. I feel like I should cut another one just so it's perfect. Fourth time's the charm. <laughs> So in theory, I can just take some white acrylic paint and a little sponge brush, eyeball where I want this, and very lightly. I think the key to stenciling is light hand, light amount of paint. Otherwise it just like bleeds through. We want to give it a nice rustic effect anyway, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect. There, 
There's definitely a better sponge for this, but I just don't have one. So I'm using what I got. Okay, big reveal. <laughs> what if it looks horrible? <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. It's a little it's bleedy. Good. Let me try another one. That one's better. That's Less good. paint. Can't do too much paint. So Full Spectrum Ice has gotten back to us with a few different designs that incorporate your logo. Um, we have this first one with the logo in the goggles with the mountains. Over here, the logo is on a separate pedestal. And this last one, um, you're in this big six-sided shape. They're all pretty comparable in price. Mm, that was gonna be my question because it seems like that other one would be more expensive. I wanna say it's 50 to $100 more. This one is more than that one? Yes. Okay, well I like that one anyway. Me too, I, I think it's cool having the, the logo, logo in inside. the mountain. And the fact that the actual shape is the goggles instead of this other one where it's like that. Like yeah, that that's nice too, but I It's like, like, this has more like craft to it. Mm -hmm. And these red lines, is that where the... Um, the luge, yes ma'am. The luge. So t a luge on each side, which I think will be good. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, then it's it's decided. Book it. I want this Christmas party to feel luxurious. Yes, it's a cozy ski lodge vibe, but still kind of like leveled up, better than before, a little bit upscale. So what better way to bring those vibes than with a detailed, intricate ice sculpture? At this point, I'm just crossing things off of my hosting bucket list, and I'm not ashamed. And by the way, uh, the Mr. and Mrs. Claus that came to the party last year have been booked again for this year. Oh, they were available? They were, yeah. Perfect, okay. They we have, love them. Yeah, they had another event up in Killeen the same day. So they're gonna go to that event, drive down, and come here. So they're gonna be okay. pretty booked. What time did you tell them to? I wanna say 8.30. Okay, yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Good. I think everyone's gonna be super excited to see Santa and Mrs. Claus make a return this year. They were a huge hit last year. And for the smaller kids who are coming again this year and still really believe in the magic of Santa, it kind of helps strengthen the magic and the plot because it's like, yes, this is Santa, the same Santa, remember? Like, why would it be a different Santa? This is Santa. <laughs> so you're welcome to all the parents of the kids who are coming to the party. I'm helping, you know, make Santa feel really legit. So okay. they have it separated by vodka, gin, like all the different types of alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I know they said there's some on here that are more like holiday-ish, winter-ish. Well, I guess you gotta think about what will your guests be more likely to drink. Gin is not resonating with me, but <laughs> maybe a little whiskey. This Yuletide Punch, it's got vodka and cranberry. It's kind of like a, what do you call that? Cosmo. Definitely a vodka one. I think that's a safe bet. I mean, it's literally called Yuletide Punch, so I feel like we should do that one. I know a lot of people drink vodka-based stuff. Um, I know a lot of the guys like the whiskey-type stuff, bourbon. Whiskeys, old-fashioned, Texas old-fashioned, bourbon maple sour, passion fruit sour, bow and arrow. Well, this one has like rosemary, maple and rosemary, so that sounds more wintry compared to the, like, the passion fruit one. So I think we should do that one. Bourbon maple sour, bourbon lemon maple rosemary, and dehydrated lemon garnish. Awesome. Tequila doesn't feel like Christmas to me. Mezcal, no. Tequila always feels like Christmas. <laughs> I don't feel like, tequila feels like summer. But anyway, yeah it does. It's the mezcals and the palomas and all those, they sound good, but for summer. Well, there's another um, holiday sounding one called the poinsettia, which is Prosecco, orange and cranberry. I mean, do you think that's too close to the other one that has vodka and cranberry? It is similar, but I think it would be nice to do a, a Prosecco. Like, so we have vodka, bourbon. The other one would either be te not tequila, not gin. So I think, yeah. What about this ruby red spritz? It's got Prosecco and grapefruit. That sounds, grapefruit's not like winter though. Yes, of course it is. Grapefruit? Yeah, grapefruit is a winter citrus. I think you're making that up. I just don't want to have like cranberry, cranberry, 
maybe do something different. As far as what people are gonna drink mm -hmm. and like the most, I think they're gonna like that one. Okay. So I'll do that one. All right, so we got the... Yuletide Punch with vodka. Bourbon Maple Sour. And the Poinsettia, Poinsettia Prosecco. Which is kind of a fizzy. Yeah, I think that's a good mix. And then we'll do like the typical like White Claws mm -hmm. type stuff. Whatever, beer, wine, I don't know anything about that, so I trust you to choose. I always call on my mom for help with the food and drink for any party that I throw. That is just her area of expertise. They don't call her Chef Tony for nothing. So I need her input on what I should serve at the bar with the bartender and also figuring out all the food for this Christmas party. Well, I just started off looking at the menu that you guys had assigned to me which was standard stuff that we normally do, which is gumbo, potato salad rolls, and then I just kind of added what I thought would complement that. Uh, some years we've had vegan options like vegan samosas or ve vegetarian samosas, samosas or egg rolls or something like that. I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe we could buy a small portion of it. We've yeah, had I mean, cause it's not, if it's good, if whatever the vegan or vegetarian option is actually good food, mm -hmm. not just something just because it's vegan, then non-vegans and vegetarians will also eat it. Yeah. And I do have a few, not a lot, but like two to three vegan slash vegetarian friends who will be in attendance, who mm -hmm. definitely will be looking for something right. meat free. So we also have done a little ch uh, chafing dish full of meatballs or chicken wings and those have gone over I me mean, not everybody eats gumbo but i thought that chicken wings are good i just feel like we do the same thing every year meatballs chicken wings samosas those are the extras i really like the idea of doing a small not a huge christmas charcuterie because that also gives people you know kind of like the snacks they could go to if they're not meat eaters or gumbo eaters or whatever yeah i find that with charcuterie it's like maybe be a little bit more thoughtful and almost like creative with what's included on the charcuterie board because in my experience when we've done charcuterie a lot of it doesn't get eaten mm -hmm. um, like people don't tend to go for the little meats and cheeses and crackers versus an actual chicken wing meatball you know more real food mm -hmm. I think people prefer that so they're really pretty and you can make them really festive and cute so they look good for the presentation but I feel like it's not like the crowd favorite to actually eat not a whole lot because we don't want a bunch of meats and cheeses left over but enough of a variety where it looks Christmassy and it's gonna be you know like we talked about having the, the food that's on display front and center on the on the island. I got a, a, a diagram. This is your countertop in the back. This is the island. So on the back, we'll put the plates, the silverware, the napkin, the roaster pan full of gumbo, the rice. Here's your stove. Then we'll put rolls and then we'll do whatever other hot appetizer we want there. We wanna do wings. We can do a split thing with samosas and wings or yeah. meatballs or whatever. Okay, then on this countertop is where we'll do the Christmas charcuterie on the big round one. And then you have your ice luge, right? Mm -hmm. And then over here, we'll just use, when I say a dessert tray, I mean very small. It's like one of the tiered deals and it's just got a few little sweets on there. And then over here is gonna be the hot chocolate bar. Yeah, I like that general plan. I would definitely say this is a key. Let's not skimp over this part because that's what people want, especially if for some reason they don't like gumbo, they're looking for this. They're not looking for that. Okay. What a, chicken wings is a crowd favorite. I think chicken wings, and like you said, it would be nice to do something vegetarian on the other side, uh -huh. I guess. And then this is truly more so for decoration, if we're being real. Hopefully people snack on it and eat it, but it's mostly because it's cute, it's Christmassy, and it's gonna be on display on the main area. Uh -huh. And I agree keeping the desserts very minimal because we have hot chocolate and we have s'mores. Right. So we don't need a lot of extra. S'mores on one side, fondue on the other side. Yeah, that was my general idea. I more so just need you to provide and cook the food items and I will handle the setup because I kind of have, I have a vision, but I also need to kind of play around with it. Like you said, we have kind of like limited space. I want to encourage people to like sit around the couch. And so you might be sitting around roasting. I need to play okay. around with it, but as long as you could just provide the food okay. that's going out there, mm -hmm. I feel like I can handle the setup. So this is like my fourth or fifth annual Christmas party that I've hosted. And so far, pretty much every year, we've done our annual gingerbread house decorating contest. Each year it's gotten more and more intense. We've raised the stakes. We've made more rules, made it more 
difficult, more fun, more challenging, and there's always a prize for the winner. It's been a big hit at my parties and it is really fun, but as my parties have grown and expanded and the guest list has gotten bigger and bigger, it has just gotten really chaotic to try to set that up in my house, in my kitchen, and give enough space for teams of people to be working on all these gingerbread houses. And since I'm expecting 80 to even 90 people at this party, there is no way that I'll have enough space to set up to have a contest with that many participants. Plus I have already done it like three or four times already, so maybe it's time to switch it up anyway. But mainly what it comes down to is space and the logistics, and it's just not possible for me to do it at my house with this many people. If I wanted to do it with this many people, I would have to rent out a space with a whole bunch of tables set up just for this, and that would kind of be the whole party. And maybe I'll do that next year, but this year we wanted to still do something with gingerbread houses, but make it more consolidated and low key. So I had the idea of setting up a gingerbread village throughout the party and just kind of setting out a few little cups of candies and icing and things to decorate the houses. So it's almost like a party game or a little, it's just a little something to do with your hands while you're at the party. So the same way that you might have different little games set out on the tables throughout your party and maybe a couple people will decide to get together and play over here, but like the whole party's not playing, I'm kind of trying to give that same same vibe with decorating a gingerbread house. Hopefully enough people will have participated and contributed to the village that we end up with a fully decorated village, but it's not a contest and it's not like, okay, this is what we're doing right now, everybody. It's just like throughout the party, everybody is adding their little touch. And then at the end of the party, we have a community built gingerbread village. Look, a row house and, 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 and. What's this one? A beach house. It's in the Here. neighborhood. A beach house gonna be in the neighborhood. And a delivery truck. And then we also have just a regular gingerbread mansion out there. Yeah, let's put them all together. So these all have to be um, assembled. This one's the only pre-built one, but all these ones have to be built so that they can be ready to decorate. And what did you say about that? I could do it. I just wanna get that on record. <laughs> I can assemble and um, I know she had those little containers. We could put yeah. like a few little containers around. That's what I got these for. I'm sure all these come with what's on the box, but then we have little extras we can throw in. Yeah. It's definitely a different concept, but hopefully people catch on and participate and hopefully it ends up being like a cute little touch to the party. I don't know, we're gonna see. If anything, it's gonna add decor to the tablescapes of the party because we're gonna have like the houses pre-built and set out with all the candy set out. So it'll look cute, but we'll have to wait and see how it actually goes at the party. So we got in all of our shipment of all of the boxes of the instant snow powder from Party Goat, shout out again to them for gifting us with a hundred boxes of their instant snow powders who bring our snow pit idea to life. Okay, we are going to test out our instant snow to see how it works, how it feels, and make sure that it's gonna be good for the snow pit for the party, okay? okay. So, shout out Party Goat, partygoat.com. They gifted us 100 boxes of this mm -hmm. instant snow from their website. It's the highest quality sparkling white snow UV resistant for indoors and outdoors, perfect for decorating, photography, and snowball fights. And this little box makes seven gallons of snow. We don't need to make seven gallons right now, but I wanna make a little bit so we can just see what it's like. Happy. Yeah, this little bag of powder makes seven gallons of snow when you add water. To make a half gallon of snow, 
pour a fourth gallon of water into one and a fourth ounces of powder, approximately two and a half tablespoons. I was a little confused when Zoe told me that they were gonna be shipping us 107 gallon boxes of instant snow. I was like, what? That's gonna be so big and so much stuff. Cause when I thought seven gallons of instant snow, I was thinking seven gallons, like a gallon of something is like this big. So seven gallons is gonna be like this big. But no, to make seven gallons of snow, you only need this much powder because a little bit of powder goes a long way with this stuff. So in reality, they're small little boxes, so it really wasn't that big of a deal to be able to find space for them in my garage. But we do have a hundred of them, and with the way that this stuff expands, it is gonna be a lot of snow. So just to make sure that we knew how this stuff worked and that we were nice and familiar with the product, we wanted to do a little test run. I'm trying to understand these calculations. We need. 950 milliliters of water and two and a half tablespoons of powder. Only two and a half tablespoons? You can make it more dry or more wet, depending on what you're trying to do with it. There's lots of things you can do with this stuff. So, let's see. I think maybe we can kind of eyeball the ratios. Okay, you do just one scoop of powder into here. Okay. Because we only need a little bit. It like expands a lot, I think. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Make sure you fill it up good. Get a good scoop. Okay, now do we need to fill this up? Pour the water, slowly. Do we need to stir it? No, it's doing its thing. Wow, look, it's without even touching it. Wait, look, it's growing. Oh, it looks like real snow. Ooh, feel it. <laughs> it feels like real snow. And um, it's like kind of sparkly. It looks like real snow. And kind of bouncy and squishy because when you try to squeeze it, it won't let you squeeze it all the way. So it's like. I think bouncy. that's what they said. If you want to make snowballs, you need to put more water to make it a little bit more wet. Let's try putting a little bit more water to see if we can make it like snowball consistency. This really looks like real snow though. Like it even like glistens in the light. Like it's really icy and frosty and it doesn't feel sticky. It's a pretty like dry like easy to get it off your hands type consistency, which is good. It's bouncy. Yeah, okay, let's see what happens if we add more water. And then we can like mix it with our hands. Now, can you imagine having 700 gallons of this stuff, enough to fill up a whole area of the backyard? And you can actually uh, like make a snow angel in it? Mommy, are we gonna fill up between the lights, like the two lights in the middle? Yeah, that little area outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be that whole big area so you can actually like run around and play in it. <laughs> will we go in our regular clothes or will we use swimsuits? I don't think you need a swimsuit because feel it. I don't think you'll do anything to your clothes, which is good, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I think we need even more water. And this whole container right here is from just this little scoop of powder. So you see how much it expands. Mommy, it gets even bigger when you add more Yeah, you water. just keep adding more water and it just keeps growing and growing. Oh, so here it goes. Now we have enough water for it to stick. You can like shape it yeah. and make a snowball. See? Look, looks like a real snowball. This is gonna work. I'm excited now for our snow pit because I can just imagine like filling up the whole area with this stuff. I feel like this is gonna be perfect. It's so bouncy and it feels real and you can throw snowballs, especially at Levi's. It feels like real snow. And Kelly loves it too. Fun and they're bouncy. Can you tell me why you're excited for the snow pit at the party? Because you can make snowmans and you don't even have to wear a swimsuit or even snow clothes. Just wear your regular fabric shirt and pants and you can jump in it and make snow angels and it's so bouncy you won't get hurt.
All right, y'all, we're in the home stretch. I'm getting excited. This is the part where I start getting pretty anxious. I'm watching the RSVPs roll in. I'm making sure of all of the final little details. Gotta make sure my decor is in order. Are there any more DIYs I wanna do? All the little small details that are gonna bring this theme to life and make this party unforgettable. And I'm just hoping that we can actually pull this one off. 